This is Keith Berkelhammer and this is Reef Bum TV. A calcium reactor is a vital piece of equipment for a SPS dominated reef tank and finding a reliable high quality unit will go a long way in keeping your corals happy. In this video I'm going to take you through the setup of the unit I've used for years, the Marine Technical Concepts Procal Calcium Reactor. Along the way I will also provide my review of the reactor giving you insight into what I like as well as some areas for improvement. As I mentioned, I've used the ProCal for a number of years, and as you can see from these pictures of the last tank I had it hooked up to, it did a fantastic job, keeping up with the very high calcium and alkalinity demands of that tank. For my new tank, I decided to stick with what worked for me with my old tank, so let me take you through the process of setting up the ProCal. The first step is to remove the tops from both the post-reactor and reactor tubes, and add aragonite gravel. I want to point out here that it is a tedious process to unscrew and reattach the top. You have to completely remove the screws, so I think it would be easier to have some notches in the top for each screw so they would only have to be unscrewed part of the way. I use coarse gravel from ARM. Arm. The first tube I fill up is the post reactor tube. It doesn't really matter which one you tackle first. You should fill the tubes with gravel to the fill two lines. Once I am done with that for the post reactor tube, I then repeat the process for the main reactor tube. Once I am done filling up the main reactor tube, I place an acrylic cover with slots over the aragonite. The next step is to place a bracket holding three one quarter inch tubes into the sump. The blue line is the suction line and should be placed in the lowest area of the sump that has no bubbles. The red vent line should never be underwater during operation, so I will move it up a bit before turning the unit on. The same is true for the green output line. I want to make sure it is safely above the water level in the sump before turning the reactor on. I then fill both the reactor and post reactor tubes with seawater. I then reattach the lids. Again, it would be easier if I didn't have to completely screw the screws all the way back in. Once that is done, I attach some durable one quarter inch tubing to the needle valve on the CO2 regulator and attach the other end to the bubble counter. I detach the tube that leads into the bubble counter and fill it with fresh water. This does take some time, which is another minor design flaw that could be approved upon in the future. Now I am ready to run the reactor. I begin by turning the needle valve on top of the post reactor tube to the full open position. Next, I plug in the recirculating pump, a high quality blue line pump, into an outlet to get the reactor going. 
I let the reactor run for an hour or so this way to make sure all the air is purged from both reactor tubes. The CO2 gauge should be set anywhere from 8 to 10 psi. Make sure the pressure on this gauge is higher than the pressure on the gauge sitting on top of the main reactor tube. The CO2 regulator's needle valve should be adjusted to deliver a steady stream of bubbles, anywhere from 1 to 2 bubbles per second. And the needle valve on top of the post-reactor tube should be slowly closed to a point in which water drips steadily out of the green output line. To protect myself from a malfunction in having too much CO2 enter the reactor, I use my Apex Fusion controller to shut off the regulator in case this occurs. There is already a pre-programmed outlet on the controller for CO2, so I simply go in and edit the existing program. I leave the name alone. I have choices for the icon, but I leave it as is. I want to shut off the regulator based on the pH level in my entire tank. You can also do this based on the pH coming out of the reactor. I set the high value of the pH to 7.8, which is the level I want to shut off the regulator. I leave the low level alone, and I save the settings. I also use the Apex to program some email and text alerts in case the pH does fall into my designated red zone. So that is the setup. As I mentioned in the beginning, this unit has served me very well in keeping up with the high calcium and alkalinity demands of my SPS dominated tanks. Despite having two chambers, the unit does lower my tank's pH, so I have found it helpful to use a calc reactor in conjunction with the calcium reactor to boost pH. In terms of maintenance, I completely clean out the unit every six months. I vacuum out the gravel with a shop vac and replace most of the one quarter inch rigid tubing to make sure none of the lines are blocked with any debris or calcium buildup. This is a bit of a chore, but I find it necessary to keep the unit functioning properly and consistently over time. Overall, despite some minor design flaws, it is very easy to use. Essentially, you set it and forget it. So I highly recommend it to all of you stickheads out there. For more information on this reactor and other equipment I use, please visit the My Setup page on my website, reefbum.com. And for more videos like this one, please visit reefbum.com or go to the Reefbum channel on YouTube.